We've Been Around the Block is a podcast coming to you from the heart of the KZN Midlands. I'm your host, Anthony Javi, and today the special guest is Dean Brown from Pi Delta. Very welcome, Dean. Thank you, and thanks for inviting me. Dean, you are a director of Pi Delta, is that right? Yes, and I'm the operations director for Pi Delta. And tell me a little bit about Pi Delta. And yeah, we've um, a very diverse uh, agricultural farming company. Um, established in 1973, so heading to the 50 years old. Initially established as a parent seed growing unit for big um, seed company here located in Greytown. We are part of the Plenergy group of companies and our, our main core business is seed production and we've been doing that for many years and I'd like to think we do it very successfully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are very diverse as I said and uh, our, our core business being seed production. We've also... Um, do timber as well. We've got 1,500 hectares of timber, mainly pine and wattle. Uh, we do commodity crops as well, commercial maize. We do soybeans and we do dry beans. We've also got a 700 strong breeding cows in our beef herd and a little feedlot that goes along with that. And we also do sugarcane. We've got 100 hectares of dry land sugarcane here in Greytown. And then we cut 50,000 tons of cane up in the commodity port area as well. Our farms wow, that, up there, yeah. That's pretty diverse. How many farming units does this comprise of? So um, here in Greytown is our major farming area. We've um, got probably about 10,000 hectares altogether, but the majority of that is here in Greytown. And we've got a farm in Winterton on the Chugela River below the Spionkop Dam. And we've got three farms up in uh, Kamadi Put where we do off-season productions and the majority of it is sugar cane. Wow, you've certainly invested in agriculture. We are definitely invested in agri agriculture. And another string to our bow, which has just happened over the last couple of years, is uh, the uh, pecan production. We've uh, taken over a farm in Mewden, and we also established 50 hectares of our own up in uh, Winterton as well. Wow. So we're up to 92 hectares of pecans as well. Wow, that's yeah. quite something. Mm. Dean, we've invited you onto the show and not... Not because of the peak in production, sadly, <laughs> but because um, you guys have been very successful dry bean producers for many years. Yes. Yeah, we've been doing bean production for probably 20 years now. Um, we started off with quite a few karaoke beans in the beginning, and um, but always done speckled sugars. And in the last couple of years, we've ramped up our production, and we're sitting at about 600 hectares a year now. Wow, that's amazing. I think what we'll do is a short commercial break and we will follow that with your bean production schedule. Today's episode is sponsored by Panel Seed. If I open up a Panel brochure, obviously to the bean page, the first thing that strikes me is the amount of choice you have. So there are six bean varieties and considering the size of the dry bean market in South Africa, this is a very generous amount of choice. If you delve into this cultivar range just a little deeper, you will notice that there is a good amount of diversity. So you have a choice of something old, something new. You have a choice of speckled sugar beans or small white canning beans and, and a number of choices within those. If you do a really deep dive, you get the sense that the package as a whole, and this is over all the varieties, has what I think is a very good blend of characteristics. With bean breeding, and actually this is the case for life in general, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So in selecting for every additional trait will come at some metabolic cost. Sometimes that cost is quite low and not noticeable. So for a trait like rust, this is positively correlated with yield at the end of the day anyway. And so the metabolic cost of adding rust resistance is low. But improving plant architecture has a high metabolic cost. So adding rigidity to the plant stem, reducing the number of leaves on the plant and also the leaf angle, this has a high metabolic cost and obviously it affects the final yield as well. So this cultivar range combines all these attributes very nicely between cultivars and captures top yields but not at the expense of agronomics so you get good disease resistance you get improved architecture and you get great grain quality if you asked me i would say that panel have a great cultivar range and it's certainly worthy of your consideration if you're in the market for dry bean seed 
Right, Dean, back to dry bean production. Mm -hmm. Um, So you mentioned that you started bean production with the karaoke types. Uh, That was back in the 1980s, right? Yeah, 1980s, early 90s. Um, Sadly, they've gone off the market because we did quite well out of them and they were good yielders and they became part of our program. But uh, yeah, we've gone over more, or totally over to speckled sugars now. Well, actually, if you look at it this way, you really pioneered bean production in the Natal Midlands in the Mist Belt with these karaoke types. And essentially, back then, we really couldn't produce sugar beans successfully in the Mist Belt because they didn't have the right agronomic characteristics. So they were very susceptible to rust, angularity spot, uh, ascocata, all those problems that we have now, the modern day cultivars have sorted out. Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we're managing to get on top of all those uh, challenges, as you've put them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we I think we've, we're doing a good job with our speckled sugars now and uh, with the advent of new technology and spraying operations and that and good breeding, we've, we, we're managing to get um, decent uh, yields and things on our, on our speckled sugars. When you say decent yields, uh, what is your sort of long-term average, would you say? Yeah, and on our, we, we actually do a lot of dry land as well. Um, as the rains, uh, the, we have had some serious dry years, but uh, we've always seemed to have had good autumn rains, and we've planted a lot of dryland beans, and our, our, our dryland yields sort of two and, a half, two and a quarter to two and a half tons a hectare. That's that's uh, pretty yeah pretty and, significant, I would say. And yeah. our and our under irrigation, we're getting two and a half to three tons. Right, and yeah. and this probably would eclipse the the old karaokas. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so the, the karaokas were a phase in South African dry bean production. Essentially, they weren't that popular as, as a bean locally, but there were export markets for karaokas. For the karaokas, yeah. 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 But, you know, since 1994, when the rest of Southern Africa has opened up to us in terms of markets, we notice now that many other countries outside of South Africa are choosing speckled sugar beans. And really, it's because of, of exports leaking out of the country into into the neighbouring countries, and this has become the the grain type of choice in in Southern Africa. <laughs> the easy way that we actually being able to produce them is uh, is actually getting easier and easier agronomically, anyway. But as I say, I mean, we've had our technological advances in spraying and new varieties that have come along, and they really are getting easier and easier to produce, even in our difficult area that we we operate in. Yeah, so so tell me a little bit about your cultivar choice. So, and yeah, we've we, we used to plant a lot of um, one four eight, and um, as I said earlier, we, we we seem to have a lot of autumn rains, and one four eight tends to lie down a lot, and the pods <laughs> <laughs> are, are seem to touch the ground, and if you do have a lot of rain, you do lend, uh, end up having a lot of weather staining. Um, our, the upright varieties, uh, we plant 9216 and 9213, and we seem to be getting a lot better results, specifically with weather staining. We had a tough year two years ago. Uh, we, we did have a lot of weather staining in the crop, and the, the 9216 came through with flying colors. It actually, the quality of it held through that lo- those late rains and significant rain, and we were able to market them pretty easily compared to the, the weather stained uh, varieties that we had right so it's it's not only it's not only grain size but also color um, it is color and, and um, discoloration right. and discoloration yeah 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 that's when the pod la- it comes into contact with the wet soil it causes discoloration and it's a challenge to market it then yeah so so some of these post-harvest losses that we that we have include discoloration to what extent do you focus on the period between pulling the varieties and combining them, because obviously this this is the, the biggest area of vulnerability, is once the the crop has been pulled and before it is combined. Yeah, so we've we've actually well, spent a lot of time on this, and we we actually pull pull to order as such. <laughs> so if we know the weather's good and the combines are are there, we we pull. Whatever hectares we're going to do the next day. Right. So if we're going to do, uh, we've got a John Deere combine that we've modified, put a few mods onto uh, to do the dry beans, and we can do between twelve and fifteen hectares a day with that. Right. If the weather conditions are good, and so we pull twelve to fifteen hectares a day and go in straight away, and we found that's 
definitely the an yeah. advantage of, of, of getting yeah. it done cleanly and properly. Right, and and the pulling is is done by hand. All pulling is done by hand. We do have a well. We bought a machine that was going to save the day, but uh, unfortunately, with our heavy clay soils that we have, the the bean puller, I think they they work very well in sandy soils, but yeah. Uh, we, yeah. we struggled with them in the heavy clays in our area. Yeah, so uh, perhaps this is one of the areas where the seed production, maize seed production, has a benefit in that you have the labour available. Yes. Um, so it's essentially labour that was uh, pulling tassels, it's now pulling beans. Correct, yeah. So they stick around and also we do a lot of hand harvesting with our seed maize as well. So the staff are around at the time. So to go into a, a manual labour type situation, which is to me is also a it works out well if it's managed properly and uh, uh, they pull nicely and it, it's <laughs> the harvesting takes uh, is, is quite easy. Yeah. Right. So is was this a, um, a conscious choice in terms of your rotation to have beans to be able to utilise the, the labour that you have anyway? It was part of it and, yeah, obviously with our um, seed maize and uh, as part of our management practice, we, we have to go onto a legume area the following year. So... It became a very important part of our rotation, especially under irrigation for our seed maize production, right. which is our core business, right. <laughs> after all. <laughs> and so that it became, a, as a management practice, the staff was available. We'd have a good legume rotation for the next season um, and obviously keep down our volunteer control costs and all sorts of things, but also an insistence from the the seed companies that to go on to legume areas. Right, so the obvious choice would be soybeans, right? Because um, yep. it's so much easier to manage. Absolutely, soils are easy to manage, but uh, unfortunately the margin's not there. Right, um, <laughs> you get nothing for nothing. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we, um, we've we struggled in the past with our soybeans till we took out an atrazine out of our program and uh, we've actually done, our soybean yields are coming up nicely and we sort of average over three tonnes now. Wow. Go up to three and a half to four tons sometimes, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, definitely the margin on the dry beans is is uh, much better. So we keep our soybeans to our dryland areas, and under irrigation we do do our our speckled sugars. Right, and and uh, just to close off the rotation story, how many years in between beans would you? Uh, is it alternate years or? Yeah, so it's alternate years. Right. And we do potatoes in between as well. We do seed potatoes as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with dry beans, it's, it's quite a specialised crop. So once you have it in, the, in your rotation, you almost committed in that you, you need to have critical mass to be able to do dry beans successfully nowadays so you need that combine that you've modified do you have processing capacity as well yes um, certainly or as as i said with combine is one of the things that we've invested in and also we we invested in a pre-cleaning um, plant and also a, a color sorter two years ago um, during that tough season with the late autumn rains when we had a lot of water, water staining that's when we took the the, the plunge and we We'd already had a pre-cleaning uh, set up with just with a winnower and uh, a roll sieve just to get out all your fines and your weed seeds and things. But certainly the electronic hour was a, a good add-on for us and we bought a, a big machine with high capacity and we're able to do those 1,500 tons odd that we produce every year through that hour. And it certainly made the whole product very marketable and it was taken fabrically in the market from our buyers as well. Is this leveraging off the, um, the seed production units or is this we spe- dedicated for we dry We specifically beans? bought it for the dry bean productions and now we use it for the seed <laughs> maize because <laughs> we do already have a color sorter in the seed maize with a pre-cleaner. But it definitely was an add-on onto that, but we do definitely use it for seed maize as well. Right. So it, it, it does assist with that as well, yeah. It works hard in the seed. It maize. works very hard, yeah. <laughs> right. So looking at the rotation, is it... Is there something special that you put onto your seed? Because every second year is, is quite a quite a quick rotation for beans, particularly in Natal Midlands. Yeah, so we I mean we we don't uh, skimp on any seed treatments and seed dressings in the, when we plant, and we we go um, Celeste and Apron uh, right. when we're planting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it certainly is worth every cent that you you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you pay yeah. for that. Yeah. And uh, our damping off is very low. Obviously, you get your wet areas that. Um, Beans don't like. Yeah, they don't swim well. They don't swim well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, we, we go all out in our seed dressings and that when we're planting. Dean, tell me a little bit about your spraying program. You know, so you, you've said that you plant mainly 9216. And Correct. And 9213. 9213, which is coming in. Um, right. We're still battling to get seed of that every year. So yeah. um, uh, we, we are trying it now. We've got a lot more area in this year, and it looks very promising as well. Right. So both of them have reasonable rust resistance, yet you still have... Yeah, we do, but and our biggest challenge is actually sclerotinia okay. on our dry beans, yeah, because right. maybe because our rotation is so so short. Yeah, but um, we we have a comprehensive program. Insecticides are very also critical. The bollworm in your dry bean production is yeah. yeah. You now they can get into your land and cause it's mayhem like, very quickly. It's like pudding for them. Yes, it <laughs> is. Yeah, and you can only see that once you start processing them. So right. Yeah, we spend our, our program is very um, is, is is pretty robust, and we we do three insecticides and three fungicide sprays. Wow, wow. Yeah, okay. so nice. we especially this year, we it's definitely worth it. And it's at the end of the day, the quality product is the one that sells. Yeah, and that's yeah. what we that's an adage we've had in our business for a long time, and we we stick to that. Yeah, yeah. There's no there's no compromising that. Um, we do we do also do quite a lot of organic. Um, spraying and foliar feeding as well which they seem definitely seem to uh, react react to definitely yeah. Yeah, we've yeah. we found that over the years and you know if you have a, a block that's struggling a bit and we bit of bit of organics or bit of foliar feeding they, they certainly does does work right um, do you guys use uh, rhizobia at all no not specifically no okay. right dean once you've got the crop off tell me Tell me how you guys go about getting getting rid of the crop. So, and yeah, um, we actually in a very good position with our marketing. We have two very good customers of ours that take the bulk of our crop, actually. And um, they've been very good to us over the years, and I suppose we've been good to them as well, and we, we supply them with a good product. So they, they come back year after year, and uh, it actually puts you in a good place in marketing. Um, we do supply bits and pieces here and there, and we also use an online marketing platform, just to try and benchmark the price early on in the season. And uh, we have guys that uh, we've sold forward a little bit this year again. And so we've set some nice prices and um, we hold our other customers to that. Then it become, makes your marketing a bit easier. Yeah. You know, one of the, um, it's nice to work in a, in a small industry, but one of the downsides of a small industry is that one or two players influence market prices uh one or two players influence seed prices one or two players influence what equipment's available on the market you know and so it's really nice to have more than one arrow in your quiver when it comes to marketing your beans absolutely and uh, that's why i like to benchmark early on with the online marketing sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't when you when you when you're selling forward but at, at least you've got something to work off. And, uh, you know, you can hold your customers then. And a lot of the time, I think we've got a good name out there with our quality. So if the guys aren't <laughs> don't want to take it, then it's it's not difficult to get rid of. Right, yeah. Our, yep. our packaging too as well. I think we, we, we sort of work on a niche thing. We do, we do sling bags and 50 kg bags as well, which is a lot easier sometimes for the smaller smaller buyers to, to handle um, instead of in bulk bags. And so we do that as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. All the tricks. All the tricks. Yeah, we've <laughs> learned a few over the years. Yeah. Right, Dean, uh, the marketing, it sounds like you've got, guys have got the marketing tied up pretty nicely. Before we, we close off, what I'd like to do is come back to the sclerotinia. You know, sclerotinia is a major problem across many crops across the entire country. Do you have any specific treatments or practices that you use for sclerotinia? So and yeah, we've we, we've tried uh, different row spacings over the years. We've been to ninety one. We've done been down to forty five, and we've eventually settled on a seventy six row spacing. Um, when we went down to forty five, we definitely had a marked increase in the the prevalence of, of sclerotinia. Is um, this? Um, sorry, Dean, I'm interrupting you, no but um, is this? So you went down to forty five, but was it at the same plant population as before? Or at was the same it? population, about okay. two hundred thousand. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, also, with the intention of maybe looking at direct harvesting as well, which right. is a, a big buzzword in the country. Which was the, <laughs> the, the question I was going to come down Jeez, to. But yeah. obviously, it's limited by by the fact that if you can't go down to narrow rows, you're not going to get yes. the. Yeah. So you need that upright um, growth of the bean to get it off the ground. Obviously, you don't. You, your pod formation needs to be higher, and that only happens when you get it nice and close together. But then you have the trouble of uh, sclerotinia. 
There are a lot of um, organic um, sort of treatments you can put in the soil and you can target them sort of a year in advance of Two, even two years in advance of... Um, to try and reduce the inoculum potential in inoculum any potential particular field. Sclerotinia, yeah. So we have been doing that as well uh, as part of our program, which is obviously beneficial to all the crops we grow. And we do that. And um, yeah, we've, we're starting to see the benefits of that. But uh, certainly we've settled on a 76 row spacing because of that. And uh, the, the sclerotinia is certainly a challenge. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, uh, I think you you're not you're not alone out there. It's probably a problem for every single bean producer in the country. Um, Dean, thank you very much for for this interview. I hope that the crop grows very well this year. It, it's looking amazing at the moment, and um, in a couple of short weeks, you'll be well into into harvesting. Yeah, thank you, Anton. Thanks for giving us the time to to chat to you and. Uh, I really hope we we do have a wonderful crop this year. Um, the the price is looking good, and uh, yeah, the crop is looking great at the moment. So it'll be great. It's been wonderful chatting to you about it. And um, until next time, it's been a gas. Take care. Mm-hmm.